Hi everyone, how are you all doing? I've been playing Shiko quite a bit this season and I've started working on a new guide slash how to carry with Shiko in season 14 video and while going through all the moments I have saved I noticed that I have an excess amount of early game invades that I won't be using and I didn't want to waste them, therefore this video. These moments are from the last season but keep watching because I will comment on all of them giving you very important tips and advice on how to win the early game every time resulting in a massive advantage. Plus the game is literally the same in the first minutes, regardless of the map change. As you might already know, I like to use this strategy every game, because it results in killing the enemy jungler and stealing their buff. I talked about it many times, especially on the main channel, but basically you want to take your own buff, frog and then the enemy buff. This will give you level 3, place box inside the bush or behind the wall at the red buff and then wait for the enemy jungler to show up. Plus, this type of invade can result in early game fights that you'll most likely win since you have the element of surprise combined with a pretty good box setup on top of ignite and so on. Oh yeah, you can also do your own buff into your own other buff into invade. This works sometimes, but it usually results in more of a cheesy play. Especially because the enemy jungler will likely already be at their second buff before you can take it. This strategy works best when the enemy jungler has a slow clear. Also, I do this when they start on the same side as me. I always start on top side as 90% of junglers will start bot, thus enabling me to proceed with the invade. But by looking at the minimap, you can see which laner leashed their jungler. Thus you can tell where they started. Then, since I noticed we started on the same side, I used the three buffs into first blood strategy. Obviously, sometimes the enemy team will fake leash. In this example, that's exactly what happened. Here I invaded anyways, since you can clear the first buff very fast with boxes, especially if you also get leashed, by the way, always ask for a leash as Shaco whenever possible. You don't need it for sustain, but for speed. The faster you clear your first buff, the faster you are in the enemy jungle, stealing their camps. The higher your chances of success are. Anyways, this can also happen. Enemy jungler didn't get a leash. They are slow as fuck, you catch them at frog, they are immobile, you get first blood. Pro tip, right after the invade, look for an overpushed lane and gank it. Never use Q to gank in this situation, obviously. If the enemy has flash, you just waste your Q and mess up. Such attempt on my part to smite the minion for level 3. Anyways, walk up to the enemy and ask them if they can spare a moment to talk about our lord and savior. That usually gets them to die. Here, Karthus sees me. The best thing to do is not to panic. To counter Karthus players, just walk into them and attack while moving a bit to the right and left. Let's watch that again. Look how I position myself so that the red starts attacking him. That's a huge big brain move. I'm basically 2v1ing his ass. The enemy laner comes into the rescue, but since I didn't waste Q on Karthus, plus box, easy escape. Again, these fights are amazing because you already start from a winning position. The enemies are super tilted. And if your laner follows, go help, easy double takedown. This is the perfect moment where you can jump on them while they are doing raptors. Enemy super low HP, you already finished red and have everything ready. Notice how I placed the box inside the bush before attacking. This is to make sure I counter his flash. Here is a perfect example where I'm greedy and didn't have the patience to wait for the enemy jungler to come to me. Never let them see you, because if they do, they will run. Your best advantage is again, the element of surprise. Also, if you're sloppy and take too long, prepare as either the enemy mid or top laner will come to help their jungler. In this situation, just cheese. Waste as much of their time as possible. You already won anyways, since the enemy jungler has no second buff and their laner is getting tilted chasing down a clone. Again, if they don't have vision, it's basically free. Not a great Q here, as I said, if they see you they will immediately flash and run away. Another cheesy situation, Hello? this can also rarely happen. The enemy jungler goes red into blue, super rare but still. You can cheese. I queued here for damage. I know she's on the defense, therefore 
will still run even after I burn Q and by the time she decides to turn around I'll get my Q back off cooldown. 1 million IQ tip channel multiple attacks at once to secure objectives. Here, I basic attack at the same time as I smite, giving Briar no chance to steal it. Or, well, technically I'm the one stealing, but you get a point. Irelia is losing farm. Here, I know the bush is worded, therefore I walk outside of its vision range and queue through the terrain to get to Briar. And again, go for an immediate gank if possible. Pro tip, to make sure you don't misclick, you can bind the key to target enemy champions only. This helps quite a bit when an enemy is stuck inside the minion wave. It also works for abilities such as your E. This one's a little weird, as I start with a KFC camp, red, stones and then invade. Not ideal, but it does give me level 3 before the invade. Here I see Viego is somehow still not at blue, therefore I YOLO him. Confidence. Just fight them. Classic flash, what can I say? And since the enemy laner is level 2, your QE burst combo is decently strong enough early game. Easy double kill. This is a great example of the enemy jungler not showing up. In this instance, instead of wasting your time waiting for them, it is best to just gain the closest lane. Hug walls, use them to extend your Q's range, and it should be easy. Pro tip, when jumping on an enemy champion, close the distance between them and you as much as possible before using Q. Here look at how I path inside the bush, then Q. We know Nila hasn't seen me, because she turns back around towards my team instead of running away. That bush doesn't exist anymore, but it still applies on any other bush on the new map layout. Xin is a very strong 1v1-er. Look at how I place the box behind the wall and I sit behind it. He even has ignite, but Shaco has a strong early game burst. Again, because of Q and E. He uses all his abilities on me early, thinking he can 1v1 me, but I just burst him down from half HP in 2 seconds. Make sure you get the backstab, it is the most important ability. This is super weird, Warwick is half HP though. Look at how I use my Q, this is because I was predicting he was going to run away through here. Therefore I would have intercepted him, cutting his path, yet that isn't the case. Confidence plus Ignite and the wolves friendly firing their Warwick results in an easy first blood though. No explanation needed here. Low HP at wolves results in an insta kill. Also, I didn't mention anything about the word placement, but it should be pretty obvious where you need to place it. Oh yeah, very important, these invades steal the enemy team super hard. Look at my movement. I walk in a very weird direction, but that is because I want to increase my Q's range through a thick wall. Look at how tilted Silas is. Here I'm simply baiting. Easy as that. Sometimes if you don't feel like invading first or have a really good ganking opportunity, not to say that this was an amazing gank, but my point is, as long as you know where the enemy jungler started and know how long it takes for them to clear each camp, you can and should check up on them to see how they're doing. Again, just like in the last clip, Notice how I use the same wall here to close the gap. Yeah, this wall, just like the bush, doesn't really exist anymore, but this mechanic applies to any wall in the game regardless. This is both weird and rare, although it can happen. If against an enemy that starts with raptors first, it might be best not to invade, yet very few champions start like that. Some would be Kane, Belveth, Brand, Zac, and so on. Here I see Belveth going top, I know she has 12 farm, therefore she took 3 camps in total. It stands to reason all 3 of them were from top side, therefore I start clearing her bot side. It's always best to adapt, no game is the same. Well, most of them are very similar, hence this video where I kill the enemy jungler in every one, using the strategy, but my point is, 
in order for it to work, you need to learn how to adapt and take advantage of any situation. She gangs stop, fails, then goes straight for mid lane. Just like that, easy double plus scale crab after. Here I was a little late, using the wall for Q to get behind her though, and since usually enemy junglers will be lower than full HP after a few camps, easy kill. Notice how, because I didn't get a backstab, I did zero damage with Q, which is very risky. I died once too many times because of missing the backstab. It really makes or breaks your potential. Therefore, never miss backstab. Look at how tilted she is. Again, time your basic attack, or in this instance, E together with smite for a secured scuttle. <sighs> that was a funny flash. Walk straight towards the enemy tower on the inner side of the lane as it's a shorter route. The enemy will walk on the outer side to try and keep their distance, but you're basically cutting the curve, catching them. Lee Sin isn't too low HP here, but by smiting his raptors I heal a bit and win the 1v1 because I have the confidence of a fucking Giga Chad as I am one. Keep Q and E until the end, obviously, if they flash you can Q after them. Here walking around vision and waiting for my cooldowns. As he walks to place a ward, easy kill. You can get the backstab from the side most of the times. The idea is, if an enemy is walking away from you, you'll 99% of the times get it and then clear the wave to deny him XP. Also, the invade results in the enemy jungler having no camps left. Except of course for Krux here. Either way, this forces the enemy jungler to gank as there's nothing else for them to do this early into the game, resulting in predictable moves that you can counter. Placing a box on top of yourself or towards an enemy, especially early game, can be very strong as it creates a zone and prevents them from attacking you. Here I'm expecting Lee Sin to start bot, but since he's top leashed, I ping his red buff, letting my team know he actually started topside. You can also do blue into frog, into red and then invade if you find yourself in such a situation. Lee did 4 camps already, but by forcing him to fight while he's doing a camp, we gain a big advantage as just like with Karthus, the camp is also doing damage to them. Again, Q, E and Ignite. At this point, I feel like you're really getting the gist of it. I hope this mini guide on the early game was useful and that you enjoyed the invades. Now I wanna see you guys do it, to annoy the living shit out of the enemy jungler. Have fun. Like, subscribe, don't jump, and as always until next time, stay safe.